aero bike or lightweight bike. It has always been a never ending debate between the both of these bikes and which one is actually faster. But for today's video, I'll be giving a comparison between the aero and the lightweight based on research that I've done and also things that I've tried and tested. So before we begin with the video, I just wanted to give a quick disclaimer that everything mentioned in this video are purely based off my research and what I have tried and tested. I am not a pro cyclist or a pro mechanic, so if you do disagree with any of my opinions here, let me know down in the comment section below on what are your opinions. So remember to watch till the end of this video and without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So let's first compare the performance of an aero bike versus the lightweight bike. Now traditionally when the first generation of aero bikes first came out, it is often very prone to being labelled as a bike that is heavy, that is slow and also very, very uncomfortable. And that is because back then in those days, in order to make their bike go fast in a straight line, often manufacturers have to make a lot of compromises to other areas of the bike. So things from their, from their handling to their stiffness and also their weight, often it's pretty bad and pretty lacking. So back then, people see those aero bikes as just another TT bike but without the TT bars. So often the places where these sort of bikes excel the most is in pancake flat courses where there's not a lot of wind and not a lot of turns. But if we fast forward today and we, took, and we take a look at today's modern aero road bike, manufacturers of course have received feedback and made a lot of improvements since then. So today's high-end aero road bike the weight of a lot of today's high-end aero road bike have been reduced a lot and also the stiffness and handling of many high-end aero road bikes today has also been improved a lot. So they have really optimized the aero road bike to become a much more versatile bike through a wide variety of courses. And often, today's high-end aero road bike actually outperform the lightweight bike through a wide variety of courses. So everything from pancake flat courses to rolling terrains and also a bit of climbing, most of the time, the aero bike does actually outperform the lightweight bike. So that leaves us with the question of, if the aero bike is so good, why not everyone just ride an aero bike? Why should someone still ride a lightweight bike? So to answer this question, there are two things to consider. So the first one being speed, because the main objective of an aero bike is to actually reduce drag caused by wind resistance. So rider riding above roughly 20 kilometers per hour, at that point, Wind resistance is the biggest thing that is slowing you down. So the objective of an aero bike is to actually reduce that drag caused by wind resistance. So if you're riding below 20 km per hour, there actually isn't much benefit of riding an aero bike at that speed because you are not creating that much drag to begin with. So aerodynamics at that lower speed doesn't really play a huge factor in slowing you down. The second thing to consider about is actually the type of terrain. Now, there is research out there that have shown that on climbs below 6% average gradient, often there really isn't much difference between an aero bike and a lightweight bike. Because gradients below 6%, it is not steep enough to really, really tell and feel the difference in weight of an aero bike versus a lightweight bike. So in those scenarios, whichever bike you choose to ride, there wouldn't be much of a difference. And in fact, if you ride faster up those shallow climbs, an aero bike will actually outperform a lightweight bike because the speed you are going at is much faster. So hence, wind resistance might be one of the uh, biggest things slowing you down. So an aero bike will actually be faster in that scenario. But if you're riding above 6%, 8, 9, 10%, then that, then that is the point where the gradient is actually steep enough to the point where you can really start to feel the weight difference between an aero and a lightweight bike. So every gram you save, that 100 gram, 200 gram that you save, that's when you will feel that in those scenarios, a lightweight bike really excels and really outperforms the aero bike. So apart from performance, the second thing we're going to discuss about is actually the fit between an aero bike and a lightweight bike. Now we mentioned that the objective of an aero bike is to actually reduce drag caused by wind resistance. So apart from the bicycle itself being more aerodynamic, Often the geometry and fit of these sort of aero bikes will be a lot more aggressive because manufacturers know that apart from the bicycle itself being more aero, you yourself as the rider is also creating a lot of drag. So they aim to make you as the rider more aerodynamic as well. Now, compared to a lightweight bike, 
often the geometry and fit of a lightweight bike is a lot more relaxed and it's not as aggressive as an aero bike but it also depends on how you eventually set up your bicycle because if you choose a lightweight bike but you still go for a long stem uh, and a very low start position then that position that you set up is actually not much different compared to an aero bike but generally speaking i would say frame to frame when you're comparing an aero frame and a lightweight frame most of the time a lightweight frame does have a geometry that is a bit more relaxed so to decide whether which fit actually suits you i would say that if your flexibility is good enough to the point where you can sustain the aggressive position of an aero bike for i would say at least for a, a four five hour ride then i would say by all means go for the aero bike but if you're the type of rider who really struggles with flexibility or maybe you're the type of rider who does touring a lot maybe you tour the whole country and you spend a lot of hours riding the bicycle in this scenario i would say a lightweight bike is more suitable because of its relaxed geometry and you'll feel a lot more comfortable riding the lightweight bike So the third and probably the most important factor for many riders is actually the price. Now in the performance comparison, I mentioned that today's top spec aero bike is actually not far off a top spec lightweight bike in terms of weight. And in many riding scenarios, a top spec aero bike can actually outperform a lightweight bike. But one thing to take note here is in those comparisons, we are comparing a top spec aero bike versus a top spec lightweight bike. But if we take a look at the lower range aero bikes, the story there is often a little bit more different. Now, lower end aero bikes are often made to target a certain price point. So because of that, manufacturers often have to cut corners in a lot of areas of the bike in order to hit that certain price point. So that means that sometimes they might use carbon that are a little bit more cheaper and the way they lay up the carbon on top of each other can sometimes be a little bit different compared to top spec aero bike as well. So if we take a look at the low end aero bikes, it is actually not that much different compared to the first generation aero bikes that were very heavy, that were very sluggish and often the low end aero bikes come spec with the most basic and entry level components. They will most probably give you the cheapest wheel set that they have and sometimes they might uh, spec it with entry level group sets like Shimano Tiagra or Shimano 105. So because of that, low end aero bikes, often you're not getting a lot of value for your money. But with the price of a low-end aero bike, we can actually get a pretty good quality lightweight bike with the same amount of money. Lightweight frames are often less complicated to manufacture compared to an aero frame. So because of that, manufacturers can make a higher grade carbon frame at a much more affordable price. So with the same amount of money, I'm getting a carbon frame that is much more higher quality. Often the components of it is also a little bit better. So they might start giving you better quality aluminum wheel sets or sometimes some of them even start specking with, with basic entry level carbon wheel set and if you take a look at the group set apart from shimano 105 sometimes some of them even start specking with, with shimano altegra so if you're new to cycling and you're looking for an entry level road bike with a certain budget i would say if you're not willing to spend a lot of money on a road bike go for an entry level lightweight bike because you're getting a lot more value for your money And based on these three comparisons of performance, fit, and price, I think you can roughly tell which bike is more suitable for you. But if you still can't tell, another way you can choose between the both of these bikes is based on the looks. Now, this one is a little bit more personal because not everyone has the same opinion of the looks of an aero bike compared to a lightweight bike. Now, personally, I much prefer the look of an aero bike because the shape and tubing of it, the high profile wheel sets, the aero carbon handlebars, often I find it uh, much more appealing and much more attractive com compared to the conventional round tube of a lightweight bike. Oh, I think at the end of the day, it's all about choosing what flows with your heart. If you prefer the looks of an aero bike, you like the aggressive shaping and tubing of the frame, then by all means, go for the aero bike. But if looks isn't really a big factor for you, then the lightweight traditional round tube bicycle, I would say, isn't too bad looking either so i hope based on this few comparison you are able to form your opinion on which bike is actually better for you at the end of the day there's no correct or wrong answer it's just which one is more suitable for the type of riding that you do 
So I hope you found value out of this video because I know the debate between an aero bike and a lightweight bike is always hot and never ending. So let me know down in the comment section below on what type of bike do you prefer to ride or maybe what type of bike you are riding right now. So leave a like and share it with a friend if you found value out of this video. So that is all I really have to share for this video and I'll see you in the next one.